you've been not forgotten. You're not being forgotten. You're being developed. God, you're where not- are you right now when I need you the most? God, where are you? That I'm going to do it with you, Jesus. Man, can't it just be the two of us? And so Joseph is in a place where he is in a jail. I call it Holy Ghost jail. You know, he's just there and he's in this jail and he's like, God, do you see me? Do you hear me? Do you, do you know where I'm at right now? I'm, I'm stuck in this place of jail. I, I can't get out. I'm stuck. And I really feel like there's those of you that are just feeling stuck. You just feel like you're broken. You can't move on. And I'm just hoping that that this this little new series that I'm starting is going to help somebody with, um, not feeling stuck. It's going to give you encouragement and strength just to keep on keeping on and that it's okay if you're frustrated. I just want to give you, I just want to validate that, that it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be hurt, confused. It's okay. I just want to and tell you that it's all right to be mad. It's okay. I have been there. I have done that with my um, decades of waiting on God, being hidden in God. And, and I just want to speak to that, that, that I validate that in you, that waiting, that like, God, what is happening here? What is going on? And, and that there's nothing wrong with you. Come on. But it's God and his perfect timing. And Joseph had to wait in that pit. He had to wait in the pit. He had to wait in the, I keep calling the jail the pit because I don't know. I don't know. It just kind of resonates with me being in a pit because that's what it feels like when you're waiting on God. You're in a pit. It's dark. It's it's like a dungeon down there. And uh, but 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 Joseph is in jail. He's waiting in jail. He's he's wrongly put in jail. If you know the storyline of Joseph, he should not be in there, but he's there, and he's in this place of being in jail. And this is what happens. Okay, this has happened so many times in my life. Okay, it says here in Genesis forty. And Joseph is getting ready to interpret a couple of dreams. He's been in in jail for years, and then he's and then he's about to get, interpret some dreams that these that these uh, people in jail have that are the king's attendants. And he says, in verse fourteen, only remember me when it is well with you, and please be be do me kindness to mention me to the pharaoh and get me out of this house, for I indeed was stolen out of the land of the Hebrews, and here. Also, I have done nothing that they should put me into the pit for. Some of you are in pit in a pit and you've done nothing wrong. You were put in a pit. You're put in jail. Holy Ghost jail is the best place to be. Don't say that. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost jail, Holy Spirit jail is the best place to be. He says this later on in verse 23, everything came to pass as these two jailers and the Joseph had interpreted their dreams. The, these two these two jailers, everything came to pass. And he said in verse 23, it says, yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Come on, somebody. Come on. Have you ever felt forgotten? Have you ever felt like, you know what? I don't understand, God, what you're doing. I don't understand Like here I am fasting, I'm praying, I'm in the scriptures, I'm studying, I'm, I'm, I'm spending large amounts of prayer with you and God, here I am. God, have you forgotten me? You know, it's, it's that part of, of, of Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit jail that, that we are in sometimes that we don't like, and then all of a sudden this Holy Spirit jail becomes a place of refuge, a place of a beautiful place. I'm telling you, if we let and we allow God to have his way, that place of obscurity, our place of hiddenness, our place of being hidden in God will become a place of fruitfulness in him, a fruitfulness, a a divine encounter with the Lord that every single day, God will meet with you as long as we learn to embrace the hiddenness. We learn to embrace the obscurity, learning to embrace that, God, where are you right now when I need you the most? God, where are you that we learn to embrace? We learn to enjoy the encounter of being alone in that place. 
and that in your private time, in your prayer time, is that place of being in that place of prayer that you and God, you battle it out with the Lord. You, you God, this is me. This is where I'm at right now. Do you see me? Where am I at? And I remember years ago, this was years ago. I had this vision of the Lord. Uh, well, it was a dream, a, a very vivid dream, very like, like it was so real, like type dream. I had this dream. I was flying and I'm flying over, you know, the, uh, the city and I'm flying in them and I'm flying up in the universe. I'm like flying all around. I'm just flying. It was amazing. We get done and I know we're coming to the end of my flight with the Lord. I know I'm coming to the end and we get down and we land. <laughs> that was so funny. We land and he walks over and there's this big rock, you know, like, like it'd be the, the rock or the, the, the stone that was covering the, the tomb. And Jesus goes to walk behind the tomb. And I'm like, but wait, Lord. And I wanted to ask him the thing that burns in my heart. And that's, you know, and that's for me, it's ministry for for you. It could be your kids getting saved. It could be a job. It could be uh, a a job promotion. It could be uh, making the rent. I mean, what is it the thing that that really keeps you up at night? What, what what draws you to your knees? What God, I've got to have this. That was the thing at that time and in that in that moment. It's like, God, what about and I I said, What about? And he looked at me and he says, Don't even ask. And he left. And I was so like hurt. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's not even gonna let me ask about it. He's not gonna let me ask him about this thing that burns in my heart day after day. And so it's like, and then, and then it gets to be this place of, and, and, and I'm talking about waiting on the God. Maybe you're waiting, at, been waiting on God for like three years, five years, maybe been waiting for just a few, few hours. I don't know, whatever it is with your breakthrough that you need from the Lord, whatever, if it's five years, 10 years, 20 years. Okay. For me, it's been decades. It's been over decades that I've been waiting on God. And it's like, it comes to this place where you kind of enjoy this I enjoy where I'm at in the Lord. I I would not trade my hiddenness. I would not trade the things that I gather in God right now for nothing. I mean, to have the tangible presence of God every single day, no way. I won't give it to me. I won't, I won't give that up. No way. I the tan I'm talking more than just Holy Ghost goosebumps, more than just that. I'm talking about the tangible presence of God that God walks into my room every single morning, my prayer room, every single day. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Okay, I could be exaggerating. I'll say nearly every single day. Every single day, reading his word and him just speaking to me and just verses just jumping off and leaping off. Like That comes from being in the secret place. That comes from being hidden where nobody knows your name. Nobody knows who you are, but you've got the secret. I love being pregnant. When I was pregnant for my girls, I'm pregnant and it goes to be like one month, two months, three months, you know, four months, even five months. Nobody knows you're pregnant. They don't even know. You've got the secret that you're, you've got growing on the inside of you. There's this secret that you've got, the secret, the secret place. It's just growing and growing. And then pretty soon, as you're in that secret place, you get to be about six and seven months. Like people starting to recognize, like, hey, there's something going on. There's, you, you've got something in there. There, you, there's, there's a baby in there. There's, there's something going on. Then you get to be eight months pregnant. It's like, whoa, okay, you really got something going on. There's a baby in there for sure. Something's going on in you. Then you get to become nine months pregnant. And it's like, it's obvious to everybody. And, Everybody knows you've got a baby in your tummy, right? It's like when you're in that secret place and you're, and you're about to give, you know, nobody sees this, what's going on in that place. It's secret. It's nobody knows about it. It's very special. It's, it's between you and the Lord. I love that. But then at the same time, if you ask this mom, I just talked to a mama a few days ago, you know, I said, I said to her, I said, so how's it going? I mean, how are you doing? She's got like two weeks left, but I want this baby out like now, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm ready to get this baby out. Most people, when they're women, when they're nine months pregnant, they're ready to get this baby out. They want the baby to, to be, to come out. And, 
And that's how it is in the secret place. It's like, you just want to, you want to leave the secret place. Come on. You want to leave there. You want to go and, and do the thing you want to explore and do. And God says, not yet. There's more I want to deposit in you. Not yet. There's more, there's more, there's so much more in the secret place. And just as that baby just grows and grows and grows, there's intimacy being developed. And just like the intricate parts of a, of a newborn baby, that the heartbeat and the, the limbs and the arms and the, 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 the mind, the brain, the, the blood flow, all of that is being intricately waved and so, uh, woven together. And Psalm 139 talks about how you, in my mother's womb, you knew me. So there's things going on in that womb being, and, and that's how it is in the secret place. There's things that God needs to depart, impart into us, and it only can happen in the secret place. The sooner we en enjoy the process, enjoy the being in the secret place, and, and getting and enjoying that place, I mean, that's who you become when you become in that secret place, and you stay, and you develop, and you and you know, have you ever seen butterflies every year for my birthday? I usually, I've been, last year I went by myself, you know, February 29th. I got a real day this year and I went and I was amazing. It was so fun. I went to the butterfly farm every year. I go to the butterfly farm it, and usually I go with my family, but this is special. This was a real day. And if I could spend the day with anybody, if I could spend the day with anybody that I could spend if I really want to do it, just it only comes every four every four years this day. If I could do it with anybody, God, I'm gonna do it with you. Jesus, man, can't it just be the two of us? And so I really didn't say much about to my family about you know what what day was coming and stuff because I just and and then early on that on that morning I'm on my way in my car. It's about an hour or so away. And I'm on my way to the the butterfly garden just to spend the day with Jesus. Just, oh, wow. People are like, oh, I want to go to lunch. Buy me lunch. Buy me this. I just want to. And I'm like, Jesus, just me and you. Let's look at the butterflies together. Oh, it was so fun. I can't even tell you how much fun I have with God. I can't even tell you. It's so amazing. And so we go. And I'm looking at the butterflies. And do you know? Do you know they have this part of the of the butterfly display or it's beautiful. I mean, you walk in, it's this garden and everywhere. And they're and and hanging up and then and they got all these cocoons that are just lined up and sealed and these cocoons and they're waiting for them to open and become a butterfly. Did you know that I had a friend one time um talk about how how there's this butterfly and he he look at the cocoon, you know. And the butterfly was trying to go like this. And he thought, oh, I just want to help the butterfly. I just want to speed up the process. I'll speed it up a little bit. And he's there and there and just like, okay, I'm going to get the butterfly. I'm going to help it. And he kind of peeled back a little bit only to reveal this mass that was not developed yet. This mass that it was just too quick. It was too soon. And the longer you marinate in the secret place, the more things get developed and, and your understanding of who you are and who God wants you to be and, and the plans that he has for you and how to go about what he wants you to do. And you get used to the presence of God. You get used to, not used to it, you know, but it's special. It's just, it's just this place for you and him. And if we would go out too soon, just like that caterpillar, it just becomes this mass and it's underdeveloped. And you know what? It dies. We've got to be in that place of the secret place. You know, Matthew 6, 6, God, we'll talk about this next week about the, the secret place in Matthew 6, 6, but, but it's like God put that in there for a reason. Jesus spoke that for a reason, that secret place of prayer. Jesus even did it himself. Matthew 4, it says, Jesus went up, was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. He was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Come on, somebody. Oh my gosh. And after 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And then Aquinas, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. 
led him to a place where where temptation came. And, you know, it's like, how are you when temptation comes? That's where we would stand in that secret place when temptation comes. Like, you know what? You're tempted. You know, you get tempted. It was like, you know what? No. In the name of Jesus, no. I'm going to stand true to the, the word of God. I'm going to stand true to what you have for me. Come on, somebody. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. He used the word of God. And that's where the secret place is. We get developed, you know, we we so that we will not fail when he when he releases it, when he has his way with you, and when he has that plan with you, that he will he will have his way, that he would have his way with you, so that when you go out and you serve the Lord and you do the thing that God that it's in your heart to do, that you will not fail. I find it interesting that just, you know, Jesus comes out of the wilderness and then just a couple chapters later, Jesus says that Jesus was led into the wilderness again. He didn't just go into the wilderness that one time. He kept going back. So even though, you know, I feel this release from the Lord, like to do things and do do some things that, that I've been wanting to do. I do feel like I know that I have a life sentence to the secret place. The secret place is the first thing that, that that we want to run to. It is the first thing first. It's being in the secret place where God shows us how to live out the dream, the, the plan that he has for us. And if we if we do that, if we if we focus on that and what he has for us, then we are going to make it and do the thing that we're called to do. God is so faithful. We cannot rush. The process, just like that cocoon, it's all mass and it wasn't ready and it wasn't time yet. I don't want to go if I'm going to fail. I don't want to fail Jesus. I don't want my, I don't want to twist God's arm and say, okay, you know, give me, give me this promise. I, I don't want to do that. I will contend with God. I will do that. I will do the, these certain things, but I, I want ultimately, I want God's plan, God's timing on everything in our life. Isn't that how we want to live our life? There's something going on on the inside. The, the longer you wait, the longer you hold tight of the things and the, the personality of the Holy Ghost, the, the person of the Holy Spirit in that place of prayer, in that place of, God, you've forgotten me. He forgot Joseph. He forgot Joseph for years. He forgot Joseph for years. Did he forget him or was he getting developed? Don't rush the secret place. You've been not forgotten. You're not being forgotten. You're being developed. You're in the Holy Ghost jail right now. Enjoy it. And just see what God wants to do with you. Just see.